Hello Chunky, it's a Wednesday night live across the world. This is the Voice of Reason and we're live. Oh look, they've got little trains. We're live in Loughborough, little market town. How exciting, I'd like to mount the back of that. We're at the town hall tonight for a man called Jasper Carrot, a TV legend who was such a big star as I grew up as a kid. Tonight he's playing here to a sold out crowd. We're gonna go backstage to meet him. Australian motor insurance claim form statements. The pedestrian had no idea which direction to run, so I ran over him. <laughs> It's the voice of reason for a Wednesday, and tonight we're seeing a megastar of comedy, a legend and an icon, Jasper Carrot, next. It's the voice of reason live in the market town of Loughborough with a man I grew up watching on TV, Jasper Carrot. It must be nice to be you. Uh, it has its advantages, uh, it has its disadvantages, um, but uh, I am well supported in life by uh, a wonderful wife, uh, who next year, we, it's our 50th wedding anniversary, and superb friends who are, a lot of them, nothing to do with the business, have been very supportive, kept my feet on the ground, uh, and uh, yeah, I've had a good life. How do you keep remembered? Because the one thing about show business is anybody can get one number one, but getting the second one isn't easy, getting the third is impossible. You've been around for decades. Yep, um, I always say, it's a formula that, that says, always to be who I am, what I am, where I am. I mean, I change all the time. You know, who I am changes because you learn more or you forget. Uh, what you are changes as you get older. Where you are changes uh, in your relationships, uh, in, in show business. Uh, it, it, it's sort of, it's very difficult. Um, uh, it, it's difficult to avoid being yesterday's man. And I've always said, when, when I, when I, I'll know the time to step down. And uh, in a way, uh, that was nearly about uh, seven years ago. And I thought, this, this is probably time to say, you know, um, call it a day. And then Bev, my best friend from, you know, drummer from ELO, uh, we've been made 67 years now. Um, we've done a bit of work together. He said, well, look, you know, be before, before you make any decisions, let's go and do a few shows. So we did, we did a thing called Made in Brum. Um, and it was music and comedy, and it was very successful uh, until we took it outside of Brum, Brum, and then people outside of Brum thought, well, we don't want to hear about what's made in Brum. You know, it's like it's like being in Birmingham and uh, and saying, you know, um, uh, uh, made in Cornwall. Um, people wouldn't particularly go, so we changed the name to Stand Up and Rock. So uh, I, and it does what it says on the tin. I do the stand up, and he does the, the rock and roll. Um, and it's been a very, very successful formula. I'm not saying it's unique, but no one else seems to do it. So um, we've, we've been doing it six, seven years now. You've just come back after 18 months of staring at loose women in this morning. <laughs> yes. Is it harder to get laughs, or are people more desperate to have fun and therefore giving you a better chance to make them laugh? Don't know. Last night was the first night, and uh, I was all over the place, hadn't worked for two years, and uh, but the audience, you know, I said to the audience, basically, if I make a cock, it's because of a lack of talent. <laughs> and, uh, and so they were very forgiving, and they were a, a wonderful guy. Loughborough's a great place to play, I have to say, I've, I've done it a few times. Um, but getting back into the swing of it was very difficult. I was full of nerves. Uh, but it, it's, it, it never leaves you. Um, and tonight will be 100% better and I'll, I'll, I won't really forget very much. That's the way it works. And then standing out on stage again, how thrilling is it? I mean, you've done this your whole life. You've mm. never not really had a round of applause when you've walked out of somewhere or off a stage. Is it still thrilling or would you sort of take it for granted? Never take it for granted. Um, what you have to remember is that if you can make people laugh, you know, particularly like a thousand people laugh, it is in, an incredible adrenaline rush. And adrenaline is a drug, and you get addicted to drugs. So basically, you know, adrenaline is my cocaine. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it would be very difficult not to do it uh, in some way or another, because you do get that kick. Uh, and I, I didn't do stand-up for about 10 or 11 years. I did lots of TV and stuff, you know, but it was nothing, when I came back for the first time for quite a while, you know, the adrenaline hit me, and I just thought, yeah, this is, this is what I used to do, particularly in the smaller venues. I'm, I'm going back, you know, because you do 5,000, 10,000 seats, it's fine, very nice, but essentially people are paid £25 to see you on television, you know, but in a 600-seater theatre, 
your, your eyeball to eyeball with the audience. And it, to misquote Bill, Bill Shankly of Liverpool, you, 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 know, you can run anywhere you like on stage, but you can't hide. Yeah. Uh, and that's the adrenaline rush. And so uh, I got hooked again. My daughter came home last month with a yo-yo. And I think his name was Gavin. <laughs> It seems to me that you've always kept it classy and your act has always been sort of there throughout the generations and there's an elegance about it and all of that. Was there ever a time where you thought, I'd like to be a bit more Roy Chubby Brown or a bit more outrageous or stick in a few F-bombs? Um, I've, never, I, I've never felt comfortable with, uh, with bad language. I mean, I use the odd, but I, I've never, I can never remember using the F word, uh, except long lart in prison when I did a show, which we don't, <laughs> won't go into. Um, but it's never been part of, <clears throat> part of my style. Most people use bad language to shore up bad material. Uh, and I think that the material has to stand on its own with all, you know, if, if, if you need the F word or the C word, to get a laugh, then the piece has failed. And tell me about being cancelled. We're all just days away, and unfortunately for us, we, we are. Uh, I'm a middle-aged white man, and you're you're a couple of years older. <laughs> there is a risk at any point the curtain could come down just for saying the wrong thing in the wrong place at the wrong time. Do you worry? Do you worry, or don't you care less? Um, I do care. I don't worry because um, if it gets to the point where um, it becomes impossible, then I'll just walk away. Um, but comedy has a way of getting around things. Sure, there were things I used to say donkeys years ago, out of innocence, that I wouldn't say now. Um, but uh, I think it was Rowan Atkinson say, uh, said that you have to push the boundaries. So you won't know what the boundaries are until you cross them. And if you cross them, you can get back without being slaughtered. Then that's, that, that's the formula. And talk to me about those halcyon days. I mean, telly was big and popular back then. There was only yeah. about two channels. Now there's 2,000 and nothing to watch. I mean, the whole game has changed. But, I mean, you were megastars back in the day. And the chance of you meeting somebody who hadn't seen you the night before was rare. Now, of course, no, no, nobody can keep on top of the volume of it. It doesn't mean it's any good. That's correct. Uh, and you just have to come to terms with that. Uh, I mean, my business is... is in, in this day and age, phenomenal with, with, with COVID and stuff. But of course, I've still got that very loyal audience. I, I don't know whether loyal is the word. I've still got that audience that wants to hear my style of comedy. Uh, I mean, my average age now is about 103 out there, you know. Um, but, I, I, and when I do jokes about it, I mean, I, I do a gag, like if there's anybody in the audience under 25, uh, if you could just look up from your iPad, just for a moment. <laughs> That sort of stuff goes, it goes very well. And um, I, I don't know whether I'll ever pack up. I mean, Ken Dodd was 90 when he packed up. Well, <laughs> and he didn't even, <laughs> he was forced to. <laughs> Kids hate pantomimes. It's us adults. We keep pantomimes going. It's us going, he's behind you! I'm yes he is! I'm no he is! <laughs> We will always love to laugh though, won't we? I mean, as yeah. much as the lefties might say, you can't say this and you can't say that, if there isn't a free song, comedy doesn't work. That's kind of the joke, isn't it? The point is, it's gonna offend somebody. That's why we laugh. Well, yes, I mean, the essence of comedy is that the subject matter that you laugh at is, is always inferior to yourself. You're laughing at somebody that's inferior to you in, that, in the context that you're doing the joke. Um, I mean, you know, obviously nobody tells Irish jokes anymore, except Irish comics, um, which is fine. It's up to them. But, you know, Irish jokes, you were always made to feel superior to, you know, somebody from Ireland. And, of course, that, that has generally gone now, um, I think, uh, because if you, if you do start doing that, the audience really pick up on it. Mm. Uh, you know, and they, and which is fair enough. You know, you go, OK, OK, yes, let me, let me rephrase that. <laughs> Um, but it is, it is a bit of a minefield, but um, I'd like to think I'm experienced enough to avoid it. Exactly, and you are, and you had the great days. It must be wonderful looking back. Take me to one moment that you'll remember forever in your incredible career of so many TV and radio shows and, of course, stage performances. Is there one that sticks out particularly? Uh, okay, yes. In uh, about 1979, I did an hour's live stand-up comedy on ITV. You know, there was only three channels, so it was, it was prime time, nine till 10 o'clock, live to air. And just what it is like, people said, no, it's not really live, is it? And it is live, it is live, because look, look. 
That's, uh, that's BBC <laughs> Um, and I don't think it's ever been it's ever it's ever been done other than certainly it certainly wasn't done before I did and I don't think it's been done since uh, and that was um, that was something that I always remember and uh, unbelievably I, I, <clears throat> I did the first set and then there was some some adverts and I looked down and my flies were undone <laughs> Oh, come Seriously. on, first rule of comedy. Yeah, yes, I know, I'm saying, and I didn't know what to do. And I, and I said to the audience, I, you know, we were off, I was just ever, ever so sorry, I just have to just do these up. And I said, uh, of course, you know, you, you know, television puts £10 on you. Okay. And, um, so that, that was a memorable night, and I, I mean, I don't know whether many people remember it, but for me it was memorable, yeah. I think we need more like you. I think we need more stars that people trust and like mm. and come back to week after week on the TV. It's all so fleeting now. And the fact that tonight you're sold out, last night sold out. Um, you can get tickets for a few venues that are left. Go to the website. It's across the bottom uh, for Jasper Carrot and Bev Bevan, who's doing the business yeah. uh, with his brilliant band. The synergy of music and uh, comedy has always been together, hasn't it? I mean, yeah. you mentioned Doddy. I mean, of course, he's the second best-selling male artist in history with tears. So, I mean, it's unsurprising that this works so well. It's, uh, but nobody else does it. That, that's the strange thing. And, uh, and it, is, it is very successful. But, but you've got could... to split the money. That's the problem, you see. Uh, mm, <laughs> uh, call my agent. <laughs> Jasper Carrot, I love you very much, and there's nothing you can do about it. Thank you for your time. Can't wait to see you tonight. And you can see Jasper Carrot on tour. Uh, book him a legend, and thank you again uh, for all the memories. Thank you. I had been driving for 40 years when I fell asleep at the wheel.